Hi, my love. Welcome to the Gemma Hanley podcast. My name is Gemma. I'm your host. This is the space where I have honest conversations about overcoming anxiety and overwhelm so that you can calm your nervous system and feel really confident and happy and calm from within yourself. Along the way, I share my own stories of holistically healing 23 years of anxiety and depression myself. And so if you're a woman seeking answers to perfectionism, people pleasing, burnout, resistance, you may love, you're in the right place. Let's do it. Let's begin. And before we begin, I want to pay my respects and acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land upon which I am recording from, which is the Gubby Gubby tribe. And I want to extend that acknowledgement to their elders past, present and emerging as well as anybody of Indigenous or Torres Strait Islander heritage watching this replay. Ladies of love, hi. Welcome back to the potty. Oof. This one is a little bit of an edge in a couple of ways, uh, what I'm going to share with you today. A little bit of a different format, not completely different to what I've done in the past, but... I was in bed the other night, (laughs) close to closing my eyes, and I had an intuitive drop-in of, hmm, I wonder what it would be like to bring storytelling to the potty. Uh, So more behind the scenes of my life and what I'm working through, which is actually how I communicate with the women on my mailing list. It's very much through storytelling of the other day, this went down and here's what I took from it, right? And so I was thinking maybe in the format of this podcast, what that could look like is um, less of passing moment stories, which is more... Sometimes we get a bit deeper on the mailing list, but more so what's on the mailing list. And maybe it could be a bit deeper here on the podcast. So that's something that I'm exploring. Uh, And yeah, I just wanted to share like the inner workings around that, that I'm experiencing in bringing it because I just feel like there's so much that you can learn and understand and maybe relate to in that as well. Um, So it's kind of like a double layering of lessons and letting you into my world and teaching um, and being an embodiment of vulnerability because I'm bringing (laughs) the behind the scenes and then I'm sharing with you what it's like to be bringing the behind the scenes. And I guess, you know, as part of that, probably one of the reasons I had that drop in around, oh, I could bring storytelling to the podcast as I was drifting off to sleep the other night, was that the podcast has felt really challenging for the majority of this year. And the biggest reason for that is that I haven't engaged in any strategy or any plan around how I wanted to bring it. Sometimes for me, it's more of a let's let's just get that happening let's just start let's get into motion and then because i'm in motion life will be giving me feedback and drop ins and um emotional experiences for me to gauge what do i want this to look like or what needs to be tweaked and what needs to be changed the vision of who I wanted to speak to and the topics and all of that, very strategic, very clear, very grounded. Um, But as for the week to week of how I plan it and when I record, how long I record for um, and just any, yeah, any plan or like agenda for each episode has been totally absent and probably probably by the middle of this year that was becoming really irritating and annoying (laughs) and I was ready to address that and had the capacity to address that probably a month or maybe somewhere between a month or two ago where I really gave myself permission to review entirely what this offering and this platform was going to look like including do I even want to continue it right? Because I could name and I knew there'd been no strategy born to it yet. 
I knew I hadn't really given it a red hot crack or experienced the most joy and ease and flow around it that was possible. And I knew I wanted to explore that. And so very quickly, which seems to be within my nature when something is not functioning or I can see it has greater potential, I create the space, I get curious and I make the change. And so those changes have already taken place in terms of just like the smallest amount of extra planning before I jump on and record. So what that's meant is there's less resistance to recording because I'm clearer on what I will be recording for. (laughs) So I'm not doing this dance of like need to do that, but don't really know what I'm doing. Need to do that, but don't really know what I'm doing. Right. And it's more, oh, here's the plan. Let's do that. And it's feeling really good. I'm probably the most ahead in terms of recorded episodes that I've ever been. It's feeling exciting. It's feeling light. So if this continues, <laughs> so will the potty. <laughs> um, but that that's um, kind of a long piece of background as to why this drop-in probably came around um, the storytelling piece. So Another thing actually that I just wanted to share too to let you in as well was and that plays into how I'll be recording this is that for all of the podcast episodes I've recorded, and I think this one might be number 47, uh, I've never had to record, like I've never had to do a second take for any of them. I've never really had much of a plan and there's probably only a handful, like maybe five or six probably at most episodes where I've even paused and like taken a moment to collect myself or to grab my train of thought and then carry on. So it really is quite raw of like hit record, speak and complete. Uh, And so when I was exploring like what's feeling unfulfilling about this or what would make it easier in terms of recording the podcast, all of these things I just allowed myself to put on the table. One was let's maybe we don't do the podcast anymore. Another one was, oh, maybe it can be a lot more um, start, stop. Like I can speak on something and then I can stop and refer to some notes and have a think about where I want to go next and then start again. And purely from giving myself that permission piece, it became easier and I haven't even needed to do that. Um, But that is part of what I'm bringing to more of this vulnerable storytelling uh, version or style of an episode to support myself and to nurture myself and to empower myself and help myself to do something new and to do something different and to share in a different way. Because here's the thing, when I'm teaching on Uh, a topic or like the psychology or the nervous system or the subconscious patterns that is playing out for a woman like abandonment or perfectionism or people pleasing or emotions like fear, anger, anxiety, right? Um, That's very different to me sitting here and speaking from a place where I'm actually in deep self-reflection and to an extent when I'm telling these stories, you know, for me to be able to bring them to you in relatively real time, I'm still processing them too, right? And so um, even having that acknowledgement for myself and within myself of how different this style is um, and the patience and the compassion and the encouragement I can gift myself in this process. And I'm sharing this because maybe my love, there is an area of your own life where you are doing something new and different and it might not be brand new, right? I've recorded 46 episodes of the podcast. I've recorded some vulnerable personal uh, personal episodes, but there's a tweak happening or there's a shift happening or a change happening within the known where maybe there's space for you to bring more of a nurturing energy, more acknowledgement, more support, more patience in the relationship with yourself too. All right. So I wanted to talk to you about a, a emotional and energetic piece that I found over the last week. I knew it had been there for a little while and I'd just been playing with curiosity 
uh, tapping into my intuition, asking questions of my subconscious to learn what it might be about or where something might need my attention. And so what I could identify, and we'll get more and more into this as I go, but what I could identify is that I was experiencing uh, moments of fear yeah, and feelings of unsafety that definitely were not factual and present in the now, yeah, as part of my current reality, right? And so some of the language that I can use around that when I explain that for me in this stage of my life, in this stage of my personal healing and growth is, oh, I'm feeling fear that's disproportionate to my reality, yeah? There's not actually a real factual stimulus outside of me that is triggering and creating this. And so there's something else happening here, right? And what I could identify is that I knew that it was going to be linked to some part of my past that I hadn't resolved yet or hadn't gone to that depth of resolving and integrating yet. Another word that we can absolutely use for this experience that I'm having that will absolutely feel more true than disproportionate fear for some people is trauma, yeah, or significant emotional events from the past that still have an emotion or an energy attached to it or linked into it or tied to it as an imprint in the body, in the nervous system, yeah, within our soul that hasn't been looked at yet or hasn't been uh, understood, integrated, healed, let go of, released, all some of these words, right? Now, that doesn't mean that you've never looked at this piece or that it hasn't been worked on in a slightly different way or in a progressed way that this next piece that's popping up isn't the next progression of that, right? You'll have heard me say on the podcast before, that I believe that healing and growth is a lifestyle. Yeah. It's a forever way of being. It's not a destination, but there are some foundational pieces absolutely that once met and understood and healed and released and let go of, we've got this foundational stability that then the healing and growth beyond that really becomes about finding the threads, yeah, or finding like the echoes or finding pieces that don't have the same ability to destabilize or create chaos internally or externally like they did before that foundational level of healing and growth was done. There's a storm coming in. My roof gets really loud in the skylight. I'm going to shut this door. Okay. Okay, that's made a big difference. Hopefully it doesn't get too loud and boisterous out there. Um, so that's what I wanted to share because as this is a personal storytelling, um, for me when I come across these pieces now, it's very common that I will simultaneously feel very comfortable very confident, um, in tune with myself and with my environment. So it doesn't have that same destabilizing or um, yet chaotic nature that in the past absolutely would have, where I felt like, would feel like, I wasn't coping or I didn't understand what was happening or I didn't have the skills to know how to get curious about it or what to look at or as well as acknowledging its presence, right? So in this instance for me, there's some there's something going on here. Like there's some significant fear that is showing up here and I'm going to go into how it was showing up for me. Um, and as well as acknowledging that, and before it's even resolved, I've also got the ability now to get curious about, 
why might this need to be coming up and why might this be the right time for this to be coming up so that I can also link it into the deeper meaning of where I'm expanding and where I'm growing and what I'm creating more of and what I need to um, let go of at a deeper level so that I can access more of in a new expanded level of what I do want, right? Um, Because emotionally, energetically, physically, our body is going to express in ways that give us an opportunity to heal, learn, grow, and evolve. And when we choose to do that, our nervous system and our neurology and our energy body then becomes a closer match, yeah, and is more attuned to more of what it is that we want, but we wouldn't have the capacity for if we hadn't journeyed through the hurdles to acquire new skills, new knowledge, um, to stretch and expand our nervous system, our neurology and our experiences in life to be able to hold more of what it is that we want, right? So with that, um, I'm definitely not going to be sharing um because it's it's not there to share anything that is extremely triggering, but I do just want to give a trigger warning um, in that some of what I share may trigger trauma or may trigger something, you know, within yourself. So um, creating that space for you to check in with yourself and make a choice that's right for you in terms of listening to this. So... What was showing up for me was the fear of being attacked. And I can remember like physically attacked and specifically by a male. And I can remember two of the ways this was um, very clearly showing up for me that had me stepping back and saying like, oh, there's definitely something here for me to look at, right? And I don't know if I've framed this conversation well enough for you to know. I think I have, but this has been playing out for me just over the last few weeks. And so the first was I remember coming home from a dinner with girlfriends. It wasn't that late, but it was dark. I stopped by the local supermarket. I can't remember what I needed, but it was just like one specific thing, maybe like some um, laundry detergent or something like that. And I was parked right out the front of the supermarket. The car park was like decently full. Um, I live in very safe, like, small town coastal kind of living um well lit went in did my thing like at the supermarket got what I needed came out got in the car and was driving home and I remember just feeling this fear of oh my gosh is there someone in the back of my car or is there someone in my boot right um and The second piece was I remember just having this thought of, oh, imagine I was sitting coaching somebody or coaching women, Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to see because there's a door behind me, and someone came in to my office and attacked me and they saw that on camera, yeah, and obviously they wouldn't be able to do anything. Like they're not here physically, they're on camera. Um, online coaching and so those were the two not real right but um not real externally so no factual stimulus evidence um composure of those events whatsoever in my current reality um but were very much showing up in for me it was showing up visually and kinesthetically so like I was getting um, visuals of it. Very subtle though. I'd probably say it's more kinesthetic for me. This is an example of one of those moments where I'm still processing, (laughs) um, kinesthetic. So when I say kinesthetic, it's like a, like I could feel the sensations of fear in my body. And I was like feeling like is someone behind me. Right. And so, you know, to the best of my knowledge, I've never, and I, I'm not questioning it. I've never been physically attacked in my life. Yeah. So all of that information I had and I was like, cool, there's definitely something here for me to look at around this. 
Um, the nature of my work means that I cross paths with, have relationships with and beautifully deep friendships with other men and women who work in this same space as me. And the benefit of that is also the opportunity when these things arise, it is like beyond normal <laughs> for us to be bouncing this off each other or asking for reflections, um, especially in friendships where past significant emotional events, past trauma, childhood imprints are really familiar and well-known within our friendships. And so when something pops up for one of us, it's really easy for the other to say like, oh, is this part of this? Or have you? Has, does it feel true that it might be linked to this? And then that's all that's required and there's this dropping into it, right? Um, in this instance, it wasn't one that I needed to... Actually, that's not true. I remember it first showed up in Melbourne, just this feeling of like, oh, I'm not feeling like really grounded. I'm not feeling really calm. But it was challenging for me to go into because I don't like being in Melbourne. Um, it's not a place that brings me joy or that lights me up inside. It's a place where my family is and I fucking love and adore them. So it's a place I'm always going to be visiting so long as they are there. Um it was the longest trip back I've ever done, but that was challenging me in, in terms of like it was another piece of data in the mix of, oh, is it just that I don't feel at home here and like this is not my sole place um, as a location um, and explored it. So I bounced it off a girlfriend and she was like, no, like I'm sensing this is yours. Um, and then when I got back to the coast, I shared with her these um two examples of how I knew something was alive and something was there and coming up and there to be looked at with her. And um, part of her abilities and part of her gifts are that she's psychic as well. And so she has the ability to channel and to tune in to spirit, to my higher self. And she has such a high level of integrity around the way that she does that in terms of not reading people that she doesn't have permission for and also attuning to my um, higher self when me here in this lifetime, my human self, is asking for any reflections, right? And so sometimes there will be information there for me and sometimes it will be that she says, no, this is a, it's a clear no this is for you and you're going to find it. And yeah, it's, it's part, part of the process is for you to look for this on your own. And that was the instance in, on this occasion. And so what I, I just, I just started leaving space open for it. I began to get curious about it. And sometimes what can happen is that and I talk to clients about this, there will be an awareness that is only on the cusp of our conscious awareness, right? So our subconscious stores all of our memories, our emotions, um, has an imprint and a record of everything from the past. And so sometimes there might be something that is hovering that is like come up, the subconscious is, is showing it, but it's not quite with, it's not like in your close clear, sharp conscious awareness yet. It's like hovering around the outside. And I would say this is a little bit of what was going on for me. From both of those um, emotional, energetic experiences around fear and the fear of being attacked, I definitely knew um, on the cusp only of my awareness though, but definitely now that, that it's come closer in and I've worked with it, I'm able to realize, yeah, that was definitely there, is that all of this experience and all of this fear of being attacked was very much linked to a past relationship where there was a lot, a past intimate relationship where there was a lot of emotional abuse. And by the end of the relationship, I felt really physically unsafe in the presence of this man to the point where you know, I would wake up in the middle of the night and vomit. Like my body was just showing me that it was not a safe environment for me to be in any longer. And so there was definitely no instances of physical abuse. Um, but what I also learned as I moved through closing that relationship is that it wouldn't have felt 
like a stretch for that to have taken place. Um, And so the link to that relationship and that person was very much on the cusp of my awareness. However, something was blocking it. And one of the things that can be blocking it and that was absolutely true for me was my ego, right? So because I felt like I had suffered a lot and been on the receiving end of really poor behavior in that relationship, without being in my like laser clear, really sharp awareness, so also on the cusp of my awareness, was this feeling of like, that's fucking bullshit. (laughs) I shouldn't have to look at more stuff. I shouldn't have to feel more emotions. I shouldn't have to spend time, energy, love, attention going into this shit. (laughs) When I was already on the receiving end of such a horrible experience, right? Like, that's not fair. I shouldn't have to. I don't want to. That's bullshit. I don't want to give that more airtime. I don't want to give that more of my attention right? Because part of my egoic story around it was not the truth of giving this attention is for me. Giving this attention is to um, let go of even more of what does not serve and that what will limit and what will hold back and that what creates any level, like any minuteness of dis-ease, dysfunction, disharmony in the body part of what my ego was feeling and experiencing and telling the story of was he gets to be the center of attention again. (laughs) And so that was a really big piece for me to take from just like the outer edges of my conscious awareness and to bring right here front and center and acknowledge of, okay, this feels unfair. This feels like bullshit. I don't want to have to do this. I don't want to give it more airtime. Yeah. And then because it was front and center, I actually got to look at, cool, and do I want to stay here where I am right now? Like do I want to keep having these emotional, energetic experiences of fear because there is an intelligence within me that knows I'm ready to work through this, I have the ability to work through this, I will be even more epically expressed as my true authentic self when I've moved through this, right? So do I want to stay here or am I going to embrace what right now also feels annoying, irritating and unfair? Yeah, so I got to work with that and I got to see um, that actually if I had have kept buying into that, I would have been working against myself. I would have been holding myself captive in something that is only affecting me in the here and now, right? Um, So that was cool. The second thing, the second way that ego can show up and and block our healing or growth or prevent us or create resistance and this feeling of like wanting to go into or feeling invested in going into the pain so that we can shift it and release it and it's no longer part of our day-to-day experience is the false narrative and this false idea that feels very real of keeping ourselves safe because we don't know what it's going to ask of us right? And funnily enough, this was so fucking true for me in this instance too, right? And what I got to realize had also been sitting on the edge of my awareness for probably, I did a huge energetic healing, emotional and energetic healing piece on this, oof, probably back in August. Um. Oh, I just lost my train of thought for a second. Where was I going with this? Ah, yep, 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 yep. And after I did that piece back in August, my subconscious just gave me something that was definitely not on the the edge of my awareness um, that was so helpful and released so much for me and created such a 
amplification of not only a neutral, even further neutralizing experience around that person and that relationship, but also of love and compassion and acceptance, yeah, despite um, some things that had gone down. And so some of what had been coming up that I also absolutely did not want to acknowledge was I was getting this message and this feeling of maybe I should be reaching out to that person. And I didn't know why or in what form. All I knew is that I didn't want it to be true. (laughs) Um, And so I'd I'd been acknowledging it and letting it be there, but I hadn't been exploring, like, what's underneath that. Yeah. And so just a little drop in that just dropped in there that I just want to say is I really, like, something I'm loving about sharing with this sharing this, something I'm loving about sharing this with you as well is you're very much having the opportunity to really see how much I use this work and how I like when I say this is a lifestyle, I feel like this behind the scenes is giving you the opportunity to see like, oh, right, like these are skills that are used throughout a lifetime. And if we want to, we can get to the place in the relationship with ourselves where we have this ability to tap in and tune in and find the pieces and, yeah, ask for help and ask for support when we need it, but not because there's it's not possible for us to arrive to a place where we can do it on our own, right? Um, so that was just a little side piece that dropped in but coming back to this yeah I really I didn't I didn't want that to be true even though I could feel that there was something in it so this message of reach out or connect or communicate they were probably like the words I was hearing and feeling and sensing And so as this built, as I got more curious about it, uh, life also dropped in more signs, like a few things happened. One is I read this post on Instagram um, that just reminded me of a few things I already knew, but it was an important reminder around like soul contracts and life lessons that we're here to learn in this lifetime. And then another was I got, I was, I think I probably, I did, I shared in my last episode that isn't live yet, but will be before this one, um, I, that there's something going on with my gut. Like there's definitely a parasite or a bug or something going on in there. So I'm actually going to the naturopath tomorrow. Finally. Um And I'd been just working on the couch downstairs to just like work in a more calm, chilled out, relaxed kind of way to support where my body was at. And I came upstairs up here to my office and swing this around. There's like a bookshelf of, if you're watching on video on YouTube, bookshelf of books there. And I just wanted a book to lean on because I was writing out my um, daily planner list and my top five. Uh, And of all the books that are on that shelf, and, like, I'll show you again, like, there's quite a few there. I pull out this one book and I go downstairs and um, two things fall out the front of it. And both of them were directly related to uh, this relationship and this person. (laughs) One of them was um, from a date night we'd done where you can like buy, like you can purchase like a pre-planned date online and it's like full of these fun games and activities. And one was a picture that like we must have had to have drawn pictures of each other. And so there was this hilarious (laughs) picture that I'd drawn of him. And it was just like one of those moments of like, all right, universe, I fucking get it. Like, this is the piece, this is the link, there's something here. Um, And so when we slow down and when we genuinely have a desire to connect with what is this about and, like, why is this showing up? Because I trust that whatever shows up is for my development 
is for my healing and growth, is for my ability to access more of my deepest heart's most burning desires in my future, in the vision I have for my life so that I can become more of an energetic neurological nervous system match for what it is that I say I want. There's things that have to be let go of, right? When we trust that that is the case and that is why pain is showing up, to return us to more of the truth of who we are and the life that is most authentic for us so that we can express, Um, then we're going to be willing to slow down when pain shows up or we're going to be willing to get really curious and ask high-quality questions when pain shows up. Uh, And when we slow down and get curious, we notice the signs that are always there, but maybe we're too distracted, too avoidant, too resistant to be able to see even though they're right in front of us when we're not ready to move with and explore pain, right? And so it was a funny moment. I got to grin and smile about it. Now, the other one was like this receipt for something that we bought together. Um, <laughs> and so then um, I was like, cool. Well, yeah, I'll I'll go into a process and a ritual and an expression practice around this today. Still a bit resistant. I was like, not now, today. <laughs> um, then I dropped into my meditation, probably my second meditation for the day, Vedic. And as I came out of that, the drop in and the awareness that I got was you need to write a letter that's to him. And I didn't like it because what I didn't know, and this goes back to where I started with the fear and the ego and one of the ways it keeps us safe is if it's not predictable, it's not certain, we don't know what's going to be asked of us. We're like, well, sorry, I I can't say yes to that because I don't have all the facts yet, right? When the truth is we're not going to have all the facts. And so in this instance, for me, what that looked like was, fuck, I have to write this letter to this person who I actually don't want to be in contact with right? But I'm, I'm going to surrender to the process and just trust and be present with it. And ultimately I don't actually have to do anything that I don't want to do, but I am going to be in the process and real with what is coming up for me and see what happens. And so the message and and the knowing, the intuitive knowing that I got and that my subconscious was giving me as well was this letter needs to be written and it needs to be written genuinely as if you would be like, as if it can be given to him. And so I was like, fine, fine. (laughs) I'll write the letter. That doesn't mean I'll be giving it. But I also knew that I would get the next knowing and the next clarity around that and that. I can fucking move with that when that part comes. I don't have to be doing that now. Anyway, the day went on, more resistance, and that evening I was like, this is it. Like, and we're doing this. Yeah, I'm ready. And so I was in the bath and I just pulled up the notes section on my phone and the biggest stream of flow and consciousness just came out, like, I was not trying, I was not thinking, I was feeling and allowing that to come through. And for 30 minutes, just tap, tap, tapping away at this letter that came out that was just um, so healing to write, gave me so many answers and pieces of understanding and aha moments and like, oh, yeah, oh, okay, right, as I wrote it out. And I knew by the end of it there there was like zero resonance within my intuition, my subconscious, my body, my being that that letter was being sent or, or given to this person right? But I had to be willing to lean into the unknown and to lean into the experience of writing it as if it would be so that I could actually have the energetic shift and the emotional 
release part around it, but mostly this was an energetic piece for me. I'd done so like, you know, so much already around the emotional piece um, inside that I had to be willing to lean into that to be able to get what I needed from it. Um, And it was really beautiful to be able to share it with one of my girlfriends who one of the things, you know, one of the reasons I shared it with her is that I feel like our relationship is one where it's like, there's so much vulnerability and it's like a time collapse for me. And I think for her too, um, as a lesson, but also a heart expander in terms of like the depth of connection that can take and that can take place when it's like both people have so much willingness to just be seen in the mess and the ugly and maybe like what we fear could be judged or what is like super vulnerable or feels like we're basically just like bearing all. Um And only a couple of days earlier, she'd sent me a voice message and she, you know, before she shared something with me that she wanted some reflections on, um, was like, oh, like, I feel like a bad person for saying this and um, it doesn't sound nice and, like, I wouldn't say it to anyone else, but here it is. Yeah, and I'm paraphrasing, but. And so it was really beautiful for me to be able to, read that to her um, and really update the friendship in terms of like what's been going on in my world without having to tell a story, I guess, like I'm doing here, Um, but to allow her to just drop into the experience and then she just could understand and and had gotten it all. Um, So that's how that went. I feel like it could be useful to share a little bit of the rhythm of the letter. It wouldn't surprise me like if in time that is something I share word for word, but I'm not ready for that now. Um, But it was really like the themes in it were like a very clear calling out of things that hadn't felt um, safe to call out in such a direct Uh, like I want to use the word unnecessary, but that's like I'm going to need to explain why I'm saying that. So direct way, unnecessary in that I'm not trying to prove a point. I'm not trying to have someone understand me. I'm not trying to communicate with someone. Um, So I guess that's kind of where that word unnecessary is coming from. But just like a... um, I guess in the relationship with myself, like a no qualms about it, like these are the fucking facts, like this is the truth of what went down and this is the truth. And um, like calling out behaviour that, um, you know, and I did a, another episode somewhat recently um, around the the power and the problems of labels and narcissism being one of them. Um, so I don't, I actually don't love using those words, but it's a quick way to explain the type of dynamic that can be going on in some relationships. And so, um, one of the things that I would say you, but I'll say me, I learned very quickly in seeing that and exiting the relationship was there was no winning and there was no, um, aliveness or value for me in naming things that were never going to be acknowledged, never going to be accepted, always going to be argued. And so part of what this letter was, and I think part of why the energetic and intuitive drop-in I got was like it needs to be written as if you would send it to this person, was I got to say it in that way. Um So, yeah, there's a lot around that. There was also um, then a shift into, like, what was it about me that had me attract that relationship, that had me engage with that relationship, Um, which wasn't 
new information, but again, was really beautiful to name in accompaniment with this new, like, no, here is my voice and this was the truth and there is nothing that will waver my stance and my alignment with this is what the truth was, right, because um, this is years ago now. Uh, so that was really beautiful to name that and a newer piece that came into that was naming it for my lineage and naming it for the generations upon generations of women before me where it hasn't been safe for them to speak up and it hasn't been safe for a woman to um, be seen in powerful emotions or to, inverted commas, step out of line and tell the truth. In fact, you know, and, and part of the imprint that I got to work on very much when this relationship closed in the past was um, being honest is not the same as being rude or disrespectful. Like if, if we tell the truth as a woman and that reflects badly on someone in this scenario, a man, that is not to be put back on us as being disrespectful or rude. Yeah, that is a reflection for that person to take uh, whether they do or not has nothing to do with me or, or with you, but it's an opportunity for them to look at why it might be that a an image of them, an honest image of them is being painted in that light, right? And so that was a big part of this letter as well. And, and like this letter like had a theme of declaration too in the relationship with myself of like, here's how it went, here's why it went that way and here's how I allowed it and here's how it worked for me and it benefited me and here is exactly how that is is never happening again. <laughs> Not just for me but as a stand for all the women who went before me who have over their lifetimes within their capacity and ability healed and created a different uh, energetic emotional legacy and imprint to be passed down genealogically to me. And here is my version of that for the generations ahead of me as well. Yeah. Um, so that was a really big part of it too. I'm just going to check my notes and see if there's anything else I wanted to add to this. I think a couple of things. One is, um, you know, what I've shared with you here in this episode in terms of it being kind of like an activity or a an action, um, whereas where I start with women is connecting to themselves, connecting to their body and actually validating their emotions and then creating a relationship with their emotions that is intimate, that holds intelligence, that holds wisdom. And so to think we can just go and step into action like, oh, I just need to write a letter like releasing that stuff. If we haven't done the emotional body work of the resentment, of the hurt, of the fear, um, of the bitterness, of the anger, maybe of the rage, of the grief, of the, I probably said hurt, um, of the shock, of the confusion, you know, all of those emotions that are so valid, the shame, you know, in an experience like what I had in that relationship, like writing a letter is actually not going to cut it. And the form of that download and the flow and the consciousness of intelligence that came through me. So I shared how I wasn't like thinking about it or like trying to write that. That only had the space to move through me because the emotions have been have been shifted and acknowledged and respected as part of that process too. So I just wanted to name that um, as a as a coach perspective. Um, and then I think let me have a little look. Was there anything else I wanted to say? I just wanted to say as well, like how much this platform of the podcast at times gives me 
or gives me an opportunity to step into a call forward into my edges of an interestingly like using my voice more, right? Like expressing more, talking and speaking and telling about my truth more, even though it is guaranteed there are people that won't like it. It is guaranteed that there are people that will want to disagree with me or tell me that I'm wrong, yeah, or argue, yeah, or paint me in this picture um, that really suits their story or their narrative, right? And so, yeah, I just, I nothing more than just wanting to name that as well and, um that this particular style of episode that I've bought with more of like the storytelling is absolutely like an, an expression of me and an example of me leaning into more of pulling those threads of healing and growth that enable me to continue to evolve and express and to grow and to where it feels good. There will always be parts that are like just for me and then there will always be parts that adjust for my very fucking consciously chosen, um, intentional, intentionally selected intimate inner circle of personal relationships. And then as much as feels, yeah, very true and real um, and aligned for me, you're going to get as well. Okay. That is all for today, my love. Thank you for being here for this conversation, my love. If you would like more free resources, if you'd like to learn about my programs or coaching opportunities, you can find all of that information at my website, GemmaHanley.com. I'll link it below in the show notes. Uh, and if you would like to connect daily, head over and find me on Instagram. My handle there is Gemma E. Hanley, and I reply to all of my DMs there personally. If you enjoyed this episode and found it valuable, please share it with someone. You never know who needs to hear one little thing to take their day from feeling stuck and heavy to light and free. See you on the next one.